another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Got to get some business taken care of right away. Shout out to our good friends, Craig and Stacy Schrader from Fight with Flash Foundation via Facebook or fightwithflash.org, who aren't able to join us this week, but they'll catch up with us in the next couple of weeks to talk to us about the good grief speech they gave last week and looking forward to that. And it was a great foundation work that they always do. And so thank you to them in advance for the next couple of weeks. So shout out to Craig and Stacy Schrader. Also, a quick addendum to next week. Next week's show I've recorded already with Parker Hesse of the Atlanta Falcons tight end, former Iowa Hawkeye defensive end, but also with Jake Gervas, Super Bowl champion with the Rams. I want to give one quick caveat or footnote leading into that show for next week. Parker Hesse and Mariah have announced that they are going to have a little baby in September. So congratulations to our good buddy Parker Hesse. So just bear that in mind when you watch the show next week. And I'll mention that again throughout the show. Also, a uh, little bit of news. Keegan Murray has uh, left for the NBA draft or will be leaving Iowa for the NBA draft. He declared that last week, about an hour after we recorded. We record this show every Tuesday afternoon. So I wanted to update you on that. And today's show, we've got Drew Tate, former Hawkeye quarterback and great, now an offensive assistant coach with the Northern Iowa Panthers. And then we'll close out the show with Kenny Smith, Kennington Lloyd Smith III at Skinny Kenny via social media. He'll join us to close out the show. Kenny's with the Des Moines Register USA Today and also Hawk Central. So looking forward to catching up with Kenny. That being said, you can see on your screen our buddy Drew Tate. Drew, my man, I got more fanfare after announcing I was going to be recording with you. You're back in Iowa with the Northern Iowa Panthers as you're smiling there. I don't think if you ever get near Iowa City Cedar Rapids, you may never have to reach for your wallet again to buy any food or a beverage after the huge play. I'll just get it out of the way right away. 2005 New Year's Day to uh, Warren Holloway, touchdown, end the game over LSU. Now it's called the Verbo Citrus Bowl, but back then the Capital One Bowl. First of all, welcome back to Iowa. Secondly, welcome to this show. And third and most importantly, thanks so much for taking time out to do this. I know you're on the way to practice. So all that in that intro, how you doing? I'm great. great. Thank you for having me. Perfect. So obviously that play, we're going to be playing that throughout the, sh the show or throughout this segment here with you. We've got two segments with you. The first one I want to talk about in this first segment, your playing days at Iowa. And of course, the next segment, we'll talk about what you're up to at Northern Iowa and where you, you had a very successful career, two great cup championships in Canadian football. After your Iowa Hawkeye playing days, went as an undrafted free agent signee with the Saint, then St. Louis Rams back then. But so I got to ask you, in this day and age, with we have statistics all along the line, but back in 05, I don't think a lot of people realize that was Warren Holloway's only touchdown catch in his career at Iowa. So going into that play, Gary Dolphin, whom I've had on this show, legendary Hawkeye broadcaster, says, I'm not sure Drew Tate knows how much time is left. You take the snap, calmly look around, throw a touchdown to Warren. Take us through that play. we got to go back to that play, please. It's crazy, um, especially, like you said, Warren Holloway being his only touchdown for the, his last play of his uh, five-year career there. He was a walk-off, so uh, now nah, he was destined for it. Um, basically, it was just a uh, – when we broke the huddle, the ref started – uh, saying, hey, uh, clock's running, clock's running. So I started yelling last play. Um, we're in a three-by-one formation. Um, it was the same – the first touchdown of the game, it was the same kind of play concept, and I threw it to Solomon on the backside slant because we were hot. They brought Will free safety. Well, they did it that play too, but the free safety came from depth. And so uh, he was in that way of the throwing the, throwing the slant to Clinton, and, uh, and he came from depth. So I figured, okay, well, since it's the last play, I'll just run to the right and throw as far as I can. And then I took about two steps to the right and just threw it up for Warren because Warren's guy went to the flats. Everyone else looked like they were playing man coverage. Uh, and, yeah, just lo and behold, Warren comes down with it. Hinkle fights <laughs> off the corner outside of him, and he runs in there. There you go. Amazing. 17 years later, we're still talking about it. And it was listed as ESPN's top 30 college football plays of all time. Again, in Hawkeye folklore, that'll go down as probably one of the biggest plays. There are multiple plays there, but that's one of them at, at or near the top of the list. But in your career at Iowa, you know, you played three years. You were, you know, obviously you're, you played a little bit your freshman year, but three years as a starter, and you're at or near the top of most meaningful offensive statistical categories for a quarterback in Iowa football history, as well as in Texas as a football legend with the likes of Graham Harrell and Colt McCoy. You have all the Texas high school records or at or near most of the top of all quarterback and passing records in the state of Texas high schools. So you didn't go to Texas A&M and uh, they had a coaching change as well as other personnel quarterbacks ahead of you. You decided to come to Iowa 
And I love your first thought when you got here. You saw a guy like Robert Gallery, because you go about six foot, a buck 90, and Gallery is 6'7, 320, 300 plus as you're smiling. But even the shorter guys, smaller guys like Bob Sanders, 5'8, shorter than you, but 220, you know, and could hit like a truck. And Fred Russell, your running back, 5'9, 5'10 ish, you know, 200 pounds and could run through a brick wall. What were your thoughts when you first came to Iowa? Yeah, like like you said, I mean, basically just painting the picture like you said, physically seeing these guys, I didn't think I was ever going to play because I was just a skinny, skinny white boy from Texas that, <laughs> I don't know, like you said, maybe a buck 60, buck 70 at the most. Um, when I saw these guys, I said, and Mo Brown was a receiver at the time. He looked like a defensive end. And uh, I just remember these guys, I said, man, I'll, I'll probably never play, or if I do play, I'll get killed. Um, but it just – uh, the uh, the strength and conditioning program at the time at Iowa was at the top of the nation, and I bought into what they were selling, what Coach Doyle was really selling, and uh, that was the only time in my life I enjoyed working out, <laughs> and I haven't really worked out since I left. So it's uh, it's been just I've been sticking to bands ever since I left Iowa. I said I'm done with weights. Very good. How how uh, Ricky Stanzi of you sticking with the bands and his training system with with Gota that his program that he runs. We're going to have Rick on at some point in time. Which leads me to you and Ricky Stanzi. You take a look at the Hawkeye quarterbacks since you played in the early to mid two thousands, and then Stanzi follows you, and then of course James Vandenberg, who's been on this show regularly, Jake Rudock, and go to C.J. Beathard, and then of course Nate Stanley, and now you're at Spencer Petras and Alex Padilla. And Brian Ferentz, now offensive coordinator and now quarterbacks coach on top of that. When you played at Iowa, he was your center, an offensive lineman here at Iowa, uh, a year or two ahead, a year ahead of you. So when you see him now as the OC and you see the kind of quarterback that you were, I'll say gunslinger, like with Ricky Stanzi, and then more the conservative approach down the line with Vandenberg, Rudock, and, and Stanley, and even uh, Petrus for that matter, and C.J. Beathard's more in your and Stanzi's alignment, I would say, or in that category. In this system, do you think it's more because of Ken O'Keefe or as quarterback coach or Greg Davis back in the day and now Brian there? With you being more of a creative type like Stanzi, like Beathard, is that system set up for a quarterback to do their own freelancing and play within the system? We all know that plays break down regularly and you got to freelance. Talk us through that a little bit about the difference which differences between a quarterback like you and Stanzi and maybe Vandenberg and, and Stanley and, and Petrus. You know, I just believe we all brought something to the table. Um, and so me personally, differently, because I don't believe, because like I said, I mean, if you coach every quarterback the same, um, you know, you're, you're asking guys to do things that aren't comfortable to them. So to me, it's, you're not really a quarterback coach, you're a quarterback specialist. And so it's, it's, it's to me is you, you find out what the kid can do and what he can't do, and then really just polish on what they can do. Let me work with what they can do. Some quarterbacks like to put their left foot back, you know, the right foot forward and then flip it. Some guys like to put their left foot forward, right foot back. What's more comfortable to them? So to me, it's on my, it's on my, it's my job to figure out, okay, what's more comfortable to you. Okay. Let me, let me coach you to that, make you more comfortable. I mean, it's like a car, right? I mean, you got foreign cars, um, you got domestic cars and they use, they have to use different pieces and, you know, and bolts and screws and all that. So to me, it's, 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 you know, I would never come in and say, Hey, we're always going to do it this way. Now reading plays, that's a different story that is, but with guys with their feet and how they drop and stuff like that, I think that's all, um, it's specialized in, in, in the type of quarterback that that's there. Um, like I said, you know, the Iowa system, I, there, there's not much freelancing. I don't believe in the Iowa system. It definitely wasn't when I was there, and I can't imagine it changing much um, since then. But um, there, there's a lot on the quarterbacks plate at Iowa when it comes to run game, protections, checking runs, checking protection, um, seeing coverage. When I was the quarterback there, we never, we didn't have one progression pass concept. Everything was based off of coverage. And so, you know, that's different. Um, and then, like I said, there's different ways. I mean, there's, there's coverage-based um, reads, there's progression-based reads, there's half-field reads, um, and then there's just uh, um, quick reads. And so, I mean, and, and, and it's, it's all, you know, how it's implemented in the system and then how they're coached. Like I said, you know, I'm not there. I don't know how they're coached. Um, but I, with all the quarterbacks that, that I've seen come through, um, I, it, it's it, you can just tell like the guy I mean they're, they're definitely playing within the system and um and that's just what's kind of asked it's, like I said it's not really asked to them to freelance and do other things um it's uh there's a purpose for what they do and they have reasons for it and uh and that's that's just the way they roll well and I appreciate your candor in that and and uh 
It wasn't to indict anybody or lay anybody out. And as you said, it all kind of depends upon interpretation and situation dictates. I will ask you this before we close out our first segment with you, and then we'll come back with another segment with former Hawkeye all-time quarterbacking great Drew Tate, now at Northern Iowa Panthers at UNI as an offensive assistant coach there. And we're going to talk about what he's up to these days. But what was Brian Ferentz like when you played with him as a teammate? Did you expect him to go to where he is right now as an offensive coordinator, formerly an NFL coach and now coaching for his dad at Iowa as an OC? Did you see, foresee that coming? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could just, you know, he wanted to. Um, you could tell when we were there um, together. Um, and he's got a great head on the shoulders. He's very bright, very sharp, knows the game inside out. Um yeah, definitely not a surprise at all. It's a surprise to see him coach quarterbacks, I think. Um, <laughs> I didn't see that one coming, but um, I think, you know, he's coached every position on offense at Iowa except for receivers. So I think that's just going to make him more well-rounded and more um, just being able to be in all those rooms teaching. I think that's just going to make him even a better coach in the end. Um, okay, with like, you saying you didn't see him coaching quarterbacks, I'll ask you why. And then does a young Drew Tate playing at Iowa, if he was your OC then, would you have had him pulling his hair out? No, I don't think so. I think <laughs> I, I think that uh, I think we would have had a good relationship actually if I would have played for him, um, given his experience on him being with the Patriots, and then now you know I think he sees the game pretty good, and and um, I think with the, the kind of person I was at the time coming out and just how I saw the game and played the game, um, I don't think there would have been much. He probably would have gotten pissed at me a few times, but <laughs> I think we could have worked well together, and um, I think he just like I said, I think he. I think he sees the game, sees the field the way you're supposed to as a coach, and um, I, I'm sure we would have been fine together. Well, when you said that surprises you that he's coaching quarterbacks now, you didn't see that coming. Why is that? I mean, he played center. He played guard. There's not many <laughs> offensive. Uh, there's not many offensive line guys coaching quarterbacks in the history. Now, is there? Has there been some? Of course, there's been some, but uh, I didn't see that one coming. But then again, you know, going back to his knowledge of the game and understanding um, personnel and things like that, I mean. I think you can coach any position, to be honest with you. And I knew the answer to that, but I had to ask you to tweak you a little bit. I appreciate your candor on that. But, hey, Drew, we'll uh, take a quick break. We'll come back for one more segment. He is Drew Tate, former Hawkeye legendary quarterback, now with the Northern Iowa Panthers as an offensive assistant coach, former Texas high school quarterbacking legend. Uh, got it all right there. Won a great cup in Canadian football twice. So had a, an extended great professional career after the University of Iowa, now in coaching. And I want to get to about Brian Ferentz coaching. I want to ask you about your coaching. So back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, and Drew Tate in just a few moments. To make the Mershman Seeds delivery experience even better this year, Mershman Seeds is offering you a brand new Apple app called Mershman Delivers. It will give you the estimated time of delivery down to the second and updates you as our truck makes its way to your dealership. Mershman Delivers will provide you the answer to the number one question we get when it comes to delivery. When exactly will the Mershman truck be here? Available on the Apple App Store. Download Mershman Delivers today. Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we're participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, Hawkeye quarterbacking legend Drew Tate joining us. And Drew now an offensive assistant coach at the University of Northern Iowa Panthers. And Drew, you know, we were talking about Brian Ferentz going into coaching and you going into coaching. Uh, you've been quoted as saying you, you were destined to want to coach uh, your stepdad, coached you in high school, and he played back in the 60s under Stan Sheriff uh, at Northern Iowa. So that's been kind of a nice homecoming for you. You know, you played in the state of Iowa for the Hawkeyes. So talk about you and your path. You were at Tennessee Martin. You coached in the um, Canadian Football League for a little bit, Coastal Carolina first, and then Tennessee Martin. So talk about your coaching career and where you're at today at Northern Iowa, please, Drew. Yeah, it's been, um, I think this is my fifth year into coaching. Um, it's been great so far. I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of experience. Um, been in five different buildings in these five years. So it's really cool to um, kind of grow my network and then just kind of learn verbiage and ideas from other people around, uh, around the country. Uh, blessed to be here. Um, I'm hoping I can be here for more than one year because I've been, this is my seventh city in seven years. So it's Ooh. a lot of moving around. So I'm hoping for uh back-to-back -back year um but uh 
couldn't be more excited to be here. Um, really like it here. I really love being around Coach Farley. Um, he is he's 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 someone special to me. And uh, and then the coaches I work with, especially on offense, I mean, they're just really smart, bright coaches that started coaching when they were young, right out of college. So um, they have a lot of experience in being a young age, I think, coaching. And so it's just really fun to be around these guys and just learn just all the ins and outs and what have you of the business. Way too early, but I just am curious on your career trajectory five, ten years from now or whatever time frame that is. Do you see yourself wanting to be a head coach or are you fine with being quarterback's coach or OC? Or where do you perceive, perceive yourself in progressing in years to come? I want to be a head coach as soon as possible. Um, the next progression for me is to be any kind of position coach I can be and then offensive coordinator and a head coach. I believe um, my dad was a head coach forever. Um, I played for some amazing head coaches, worked for some amazing head coaches. So kind of been able to put my own little um, flavor in everything. And I just, I believe um, what I bring to the building every day from a mindset and from a relationship wise, uh, we can uh, really grow and do something special. So that's, and I want talking. everyone to hear my voice every day. And I believe I can deliver. Uh, I'd say I love that. Just hearing, knowing your competitive nature, your playing career, man, when I love playing for a guy like you with your fire and, you know, you mentioned Coach Farley. Now, I'll always say he's older than me, but only by a year. I played against him in high school. He's from Wacon. I'm from the Castellia Postville area, so you better be careful. I know Coach a little bit, and so it is interesting that you say you've gotten close to Mark Farley because he's been there forever as a player as a coach, left with Terry Allen, went to KU for a while, came back, and now has been there, and they've got him signed through 2026. So I love that program there, a former great player from Iowa, the state of Iowa, but also from Northern Iowa, Bryce Pop played for the Packers and the Bills, another great coach. You've had players like Spencer Brown going in the draft. you got an offensive lineman who will be picked this year, probably at or near with Tyler Linderbaum here from the University of Iowa. So a lot happening with the Northern Iowa Panthers football, and Drew, I can hear the excitement in your voice. Give us your takeaway of where you think this year is going to go for you guys. You know, it's so early. You know, we're still – we've only had five practices in spring ball right now. But um, from uh, my perspective, what I'm seeing from just the tight end room, these guys have gotten better every day. Um, and then as a unit collectively, we've gotten better as an offense, I believe, every day. And, you know, it's so early and it's hard to predict anything. We're in the toughest conference, I believe, in FCS football. Um, yeah. It's a really good conference with a lot of good teams. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit, obviously, and we're going to go as far as – the players can uh, take us, and, and, and the players know that, and they accept that responsibility and the challenge. Um, but, you know, uh, I think from a coach's perspective, you know, the players are always going to get the best opportunity to be successful. It's our job to put them in those positions, and um, I believe we're going to do it. And um, we're just, you know, we're just really focusing on just getting better tomorrow in our, next, in our day six practice. That's all. Love to hear it. And the reason I asked you, I know you've only been there a short time yourself and you're into five practices of spring ball. Your spring game is the same day as University of Iowa's is on Saturday, April 23rd. But just knowing Coach Farley and that tradition he's built there. And hey, he was a great high, he was a very good high school athlete in baseball uh, and football and basketball. So uh, he brings that competitive fire like you do. And Bryce Pop, like I mentioned, that great coaching staff. Drew, we can't wish you any more good luck than we have already and we'll continue to. Thanks for catching up with us. We'll catch up with you soon, maybe after the spring going into the football season to see how you look. Thanks for taking us down memory lane and all the best to you, Drew. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. For Drew Tate, former Hawkeye quarterback legend and now offensive assistant coach for the Northern Iowa Panthers, Drew Tate. So for Drew Tate, I'm Dave O'Hara and Hawkeye. Back with more to close out the show in just a few moments. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through. And the same holds true here. From our fair upfront pricing to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Who do you trust to produce the best yield? A seed company that's chasing technology or a seed company that's writing the book on it? Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Mershman Seeds has been treating soybeans for decades, long before it was commonplace. We're the leader in technology, introducing Mershman Seeds' latest advancement in seed treatment with an added fungicide to help produce a faster, more even emergence every single time. 
Who can you trust with your yields? Mersman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see, my buddy Kenny Smith joining us. Kennington Lloyd Smith III with the Des Moines Register, <laughs> right. USA Today, and also hawkcentral.com. But Kenny, for the rest of this interview, we'll just call you Kenny. Sounds like a plan. Thank <laughs> hey, you for th having you're me. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. It's been a long time in coming. Right. Kenny's going to join us in a couple of weeks here as well. And I uh, wanted to talk again about Parker Hesse and Jake Travas next week's show. That we recorded that last week. Congratulations to Parker and Mariah. They're expecting their first baby in September, all over social media. So Parker gave me the clearance to mention that on this week's show uh, to promote next week's show. So again, we recorded that show last Tuesday, and then Parker and Mariah made their announcement after the show was recorded. Also, after the show was recorded last week, as you know, Kenny, we're recording this on Tuesday afternoon, April 5th. We recorded last week on Tuesday afternoon. And as luck would have it, about an hour after we recorded the show, as you're laughing with me, right. Keegan Murray, congratulations. Absolutely. Declared himself for the NBA draft. Talk about that, please. Yeah. Um, you know, Keegan had a spectacular year, a sophomore year. I mean, he accomplished pretty much everything that you would want to in a single season at Iowa, breaking Luka Garza's single season record, all first team Big Ten, consensus All American, was in the running for Big Ten Player of the Year, finalist for the Naismith award and really put himself at the forefront of the conversation for best players in college basketball mm -hmm. and in today's you know nba especially with the fascination about prospects age you know keegan is already somebody who's a little bit older did the the prep year at dme so i'm um, a little bit older at, as a sophomore and looking at his draft stock as high as it can be i think that he just you know evaluated it and thought to himself that this was the best opportunity and the best um, decision for him to make in order to, you know, maximize his potential and go on into the NBA. Think about this, too, and we talked with uh, Jeff Horner and a couple other basketball insiders on this show and off the air, and you and I and my production partner Rob were talking off the air a little bit about, hey, there could be some uh, room for Chris Murray. If an NBA scout looked at that and said, hey, we can do a package deal, Oklahoma City, I'm not saying they would, but they've got the draft picks. Uh, Chris Murray even said, I've got a decision to make. Right. So do you think Chris come, comes back barring any major deal Chris comes back? Yeah, I think that I think he will come back. I think that he looks at what Keegan did this year as the focal point and the number one player. And I think that he sees an opportunity for himself to take a similar leap. Not to say that he is going to be a consensus All-American or a top five pick, but I think that him as a number one player on next year's Iowa's team with a lot of players coming back, knowing their roles and taking that next step, him being the, the focal point and that number one option has a chance to cement himself definitely as a first round mm -hmm. pick. You know, I think him coming back uh, and playing in that same four spot, maybe averaging, you know, 17 to seven, maybe he could average even more than that. But just consistently showing that he can be a three level scorer, um, continuing to show that he can knock down perimeter shots, play a high level of defense. Really the same questions that, that Keegan had to answer last year. I think that Chris could step into that role, answer those questions, solidify his draft stock, and um, make some money himself. I think that is so well stated. And again, we're not saying, Jeff Horner and I and others, that Chris would do that. But just interesting fodder because there are a right. lot of opportunities out there that come up out of nowhere. And Fran's going to have to have to hit the transfer portal, as we know. And we had some interesting scenarios. And again, at Skinny Kenny via social, at Skinny Kenny space via social media or Kenny Smith here. Again, Kennington Lloyd Smith III with the Des Moines Register, USA Today, and HawkCentral.com. You know, it's interesting. Kenny, when we talk about former Hawkeye players, and I guess Jack Nunji, uh, congratulations to him for winning the NIT at Xavier, and he could transfer if he so chooses with a new coach coming in and Sean Miller at Xavier after winning the NIT title. Congrats to Jordan Bohannon for winning the three-point contest right. at the uh, for the uh, national three-point contest, and now he's gone officially, right? There's yes. no years yes. left? Okay, yes. just want to make officially. sure. Officially. Let's get to football, because when you join us in two weeks, we'll talk more basketball and other recruiting, but mm -hmm. you had press availability today. In about a minute or so, give us your takeaway from Hawks football today. Yeah, my biggest takeaway was that, you know, we got an open viewing period last week. We saw a lot of players, primarily on defense, starters who were not practicing, Kayvon Merriweather, Terry Roberts, Jamari Harris, Jack Campbell, for example. And I think that that has really opened up the door for younger players on the depth chart and players who are going to have to step into focal roles this year. I'm thinking of players like a Sebastian Castro, for example. Um, players on the defensive line, Deontay Craig, who are going to have to step up. Um, even players in the secondary, Quinn Schulte, Xavier Wampa, getting a chance to, to run with mm. the ones um, as well. Cooper DeGene. So 
You know, my biggest takeaway was that yes, starters are out, but they've have a lot of built-in reps and that opens up the door for, for younger players to come in, get a chance to run with the ones, get that higher level of competition and prepare themselves, you know, just in case the, these injuries linger on into the fall and they'll be able to, to step right in and continue the, the excellence of Phil Parker's defense. That Hawkeye beat never ends. You do a great job. <laughs> Kenny, Thank thanks so much. First time out. Yeah. Look forward to talking to you in two weeks. Thank you so much for having me. First time I met this guy, he was in tears with his family because they won the, the <laughs> Atlanta. His hometown Atlanta Braves won the World Series last October. And the last time they did that, he was three months old in 95. So congrats to you and your Braves. Thank you, man. It's hey. been a great year for Georgia in general. It so. really, yeah, there's a little bit going on there. Hey, for Kenny Smith and also to Drew Tate and to you, the viewers, thanks for joining us with Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. That's all for me. Thanks to all of you. And as always, thanks for staying tuned at the end of the program for these rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the attention and credit they so richly deserve. And as always, to our aforementioned guests and to you, the viewers. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.